All right. Well, it is seven. I'm going to slow roll. This is this is the way I kind of try and do it so that we're not sitting here in silence waiting for things to start. Um, if you've never met me and I've never met you, my name is Greg Bailey. I am the drama teacher at TVHS. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're here, it's because your student is in SpongeBob, in improv, is going to Fullerton, or is involved in Mary Gerard. I'm guessing because the email I sent out said those four things we're going to talk about. And if your students involved, you should come. Um, there's far more parents involved in those things than we have in the room right now, but that's okay. I do try and keep the students up to date in class as much as I can and around school. Um, we got, uh, we're just very, we're, 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 look, we're feeling really good about things going forward here. The last couple of weeks have been a little shaky. As you all know, we had to postpone our last four performances or three performances of Mary Gerard um, because of an outbreak of COVID that we had in our own program. Um, but now almost all the students are back. I have a couple, you know, just a, a, a drama one students really that are still out with COVID from other things, but they're part of other circles largely too, for the most part. So almost all of our core kids, you know, the ones who got it, they're back. So that's really good news. That's a thank you. Thank you at least for Omicron being mostly light as far as like we can all get back in a week or two and, and be ready. Um, okay. I'm going to roll in just a little bit. The first, the first thing is not a huge announcement because it's been on the schedule and we're just happy to say that it's happening Friday this week, just three days from now. We are having our next improv show, our improv performance at the PAC on campus. The tickets are available through the On the Stage app. Um, they're $6 for everybody. Best news is ASB is going to give us 50 free ASB gold card tickets again. They usually do that for the first show of every semester. So we're going to be making announcements all over campus this week about students being able to come for free if they have a gold card. If any of your students have a gold card, they need to come to the improv show. That's it. Friday night, seven o'clock. Um, our improv team is pretty solid. We have a new member who you can all see right now. Wave at him, Solana. There it is. Hi. That's Solana Lily. She's a new member of our improv team. Um, she's doing a great job and everyone's really prepared. Um, we're taking most of the kids from the improv team to Fullerton as well. So um, the we will be playing, there's like seven or eight games that they have to be prepared to play at the Fullerton competition. So I think we're playing all of those games plus a couple extras at the show this week. So you'll be able to see a little preview of what we were hoping to be getting ourselves into at Fullerton for the improv team. Um, and that'll be really exciting. So seven o'clock, um, I believe that there are still a couple spaces available. There are, um, as a matter of fact, at this moment, our only our esteemed president is signed up to do anything for the improv show we have a, a spot for tickets sales and a spot for concessions my wife usually does ticket sales but she actually has a dress rehearsal um for her show clue little shameless plug my wife is playing miss scarlet in clue at the old town theater this weekend and next weekend actually i'm sorry it's not a it's it's opening night it's not even a, a dress rehearsal i take it back um, so yeah, she has a performance, so we don't have anyone selling tickets yet. I would like at least one other person. That would be awesome. I think I saw some hands oh, outstanding. And you know, you get two loses for the price of one. If I sign uh, up. Oh, easy. I, I know Mr. Raphael will be, I'm, I'm assuming Mr. Raphael will be there, especially for the improv shows. If you don't know, um, Michelle's husband, Raphael, uh, used to be the drama teacher at Chaparral and he actually has been coming in and doing some coaching with our improv team. They like to call him Mr. Poppy Loza. I can't complain, it's, it's nice. So at any rate, the improv team is doing great things. Um, we're really excited about how things are going. We're really excited to prepare for Fullerton. And we hope that you guys will all have a chance to come out on Friday night this week to the improv show. Best thing, if you volunteer, you get to sh see the show for free. It's six bucks, so you know, either way. All right, are there any questions about the improv show? That's the easiest one that's been on the book since August. I can hear you. Oh, I can help, sorry, I'm his mom. Outstanding. That will be outstanding. Um, yeah. So if you, if anyone wants to help, um, uh, I, I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, there is a sign up genius page that um, if you have not already done so, you can sign up it through this uh, link that I just put into the chat. Um, okay. That This helps us keep everything organized. Um, and that's going to be 
key because we're going to come back to this sign up chat in just a minute. Um, so I appreciate that. That's outstanding. If you want to, if you wouldn't mind helping out, we always appreciate the help for that. All right. I'm going to move on to the big thing now. Yeah. I think we've had, we're five minutes in. We need to talk about Fullerton. So here's the thing. At this moment right now, there are six parents signed up on Sign Up Genius to drive to Fullerton. But I have also heard, I've gotten emails from several other parents who have said that they can drive um, if we need them to. The, today is D-Day. We need to decide what our operation is going to be for Fullerton because if we are taking parents and cars, then we need to get our hotel lodging squared away now. So um, I'm hoping that with, with, within the next 10 to 15 minutes, we can really um, uh, know for sure what we're doing. Um, and this, I've, I've talked about this in the last couple of meetings. And I'm going to talk about it one more time because what we need is a huge ask. And I know it is. Um, we need parents who can take a day off of work on a Friday and spend the entire day Friday and the entire day on Saturday um, chaperoning a field trip, driving kids around, taking them to and from the hotel, making sure they get where they're supposed to go. Um, and on top of all that, if you're going, I also need you to kick in money for your hotel room. So it's a giant ask, and I know it is. Um, and so um, I want to make sure that we have uh, enough parents to do what we want to do and that there's nobody who's feeling like coerced into it because that's not what we're about. We want to make sure that if people are volunteering, it's because they have the time, they have the resources, and they're happy to do it. So this is what we need. And, um, and I'll just open it up in a second once I, I put it out there. We need at least four more parents. And then before we can even finalize that, we need to actually talk about, okay, how many empty seats do you have in your car? So um, we have 33 students signed up to attend Fullerton. And if all of us have, like my car, I could put three students in it. If that's, a, if that's an average, is the three extra spots besides the driver, we could squeeze a fourth. So I realized that like nine would be the very minimum, but 11 is a, probably a good number. We have six right now. So we, I'm looking for at least four or five more. I've had a couple of parents say, hey, both of us can drive if we need to. So I'm actually pretty confident that we have enough interest and enough people to make it happen. I just want to make sure because we can go to Fullerton without the parents driving. It's just we got to take buses. We won't see the show. And we will have to be at TBHS at 5 a.m. on Saturday, March 18th. And that, that right there is the biggest one. Okay, so are there any, is there anyone in here who is wanting to go and has not yet signed up? I see you. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I can take seven kids with me. You and got a van. I got a, yeah, we got the extra large. Uh, the suburban or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's outstanding. So we got seven there. Good. Yeah. Um, and let's see, let me look at the other drivers who are signed up. Um, Michelle, how many people can you take? Well, it's, if, if we carpool, I can take three. But if we end up both having to drive, then we can each take four. Okay. But so you guys good. have between three and eight. Right. <laughs> All right. Good, good, good. How many uh, Elizabeth can take five. Elaine says she can fit Amy and five more. All right. This, we're getting into business territory now because even with only five cars, we've almost said it because we have big cars. Um, three, four squeezed. All right. Yes, I can take seven. All right. All right. So this is the thing I appreciate. This is awesome. I think we're going to, I think we're there. I think that we have it. Um, yeah, not everyone in SpongeBob is invited in this one. Um, it's only the people who are in, in the tap dance. So unless you're in advanced drama, improv, stage tech, or the tap dance of SpongeBob, that's a next year thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing. Someone put it in there, but we can't take too much luggage. Well, that's, a, that's another thing that we can do. Like, I might be able to meet y'all at Starbucks in a pickup truck and throw a bunch of stuff in my pickup truck. Now, the only, and if I have to, I can take one kid. Mine. That's the only one I'm allowed to drive um, because. Uh, and, and I want to make sure we all know about this because everyone who's going needs to be aware of and comfortable with this. The way we do this means that the responsibility of the field trip is, at, of the transportation, 
of the entire time they're at Fullerton, they are the responsibility of the school, they are covered by the school's insurance. But if we are having the parent support group organize the transportation to and from, that means that everything that happens before they get to the college and after they leave the campus is not on the liability of the school. And because of that, I cannot drive students and I cannot even stay at the same hotel that y'all are staying at. Um, so um, it's just, a, it's a matter of liability. If we wanted to do this like fully on the books with school insurance, we'd actually have to take it to a board meeting and get board approval to take a two day trip. So this is considered two one day field trips with parents dealing with the transportation in between. Um, and I'm only making sure that you all are aware of that because I just don't want there to be any confusion about it. This is a really, uh, 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 it's just like taking your kids to the movies or taking someplace in Orange County, like you're going to an Angels game or something, you know. Yes, you had a question? Oh, yeah, sorry. So I know you're talking about the transportation, but if we're uh, volunteering as a chaperone to stay, how does that, I know you mentioned we have to pay for our own room. So are we just with our own child in that room or how does that all work? So there's also, and, and what we'll have to do is we're going to have to have a Fullerton specific meeting. And we'll probably do that in a couple of weeks before okay. we actually get to the next parent meeting time, because we will have to, we'll have some stuff to figure out before March 1st. Okay. So uh, within like probably two, three weeks from now, we're going to have a Fullerton specific meeting. And, and, and in the meantime, we will start organizing people into rooms. So this okay. is the way it works. Okay. I just, I'm sorry just to, to interject because one of the other things we'll need as well, just to make sure people know what they're committing to, we'll need somebody who's willing to put the rooms on a card that has the, the availability and willingness to put it on a card. And I think too, I know John said he could probably book us those rooms for about 200 each. And then depending how many kids, we could be look, looking anywhere from about $50 or more um, per student. But if a student should have to drop out at the last minute, maybe they're COVID positive. Like, I don't want whoever volunteers their car to be stuck with, you know, anything. So th there may be the possibility if you drop out at the last minute, you may not be able to get a refund. So I, these may be things that we need to, to talk about yeah. as well. Do you I, mind I, putting that sign up uh, genius for Fullerton on the chat as well? It's the same one. Oh, it's the same just, one. Okay, that's for improv, yep. volunteer, and it is both. just our TVHS okay. drama sign up genius page. Um, okay. So yeah, Michelle's got that set up for everything that we every donation and and volunteering thing that we have for the rest of the year. It's it's okay. in, in there. Perfect. Thank you. So um, and the yeah, go ahead. So just out of, so just out of curiosity, um, with the room thing. So for me, like I would put one one room on my card, and someone else that's driving would put it. Or are you saying someone would have multiple rooms on one card? In, in order for us to book the entire block of rooms, somebody needs to put the entire bill onto a uh, card. Oh. And then get paid back. That's the whole thing. Is like they don't have okay. to. Be, we're not asking any one person to pay. We're some, but in order for us to book a block of rooms together, we have to pay for it all at once. So maybe someone who has like, and then we could Venmo them. Right. 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 Uh, okay. and, and so, the, and, and then we keep track of all of the pays, ins and outs. And the way that it works is we figure out what a single room charge is around $200, right? And then mm -hmm. based on the number of people in that room, that's what people pay. And the question was asked, do, do kids just stay with their parents? Actually, typically, no, they, they sometimes do. And they usually do don't. Most of the time we have rooms of four kids and then most of our parents bunk with another parent. Um, but that is all up to the families. Like every single parent who's going, you, if you want to say, I'm just, I'd rather be in a room with my kid and just my kid, or if you want to be in a room with a kid and their best friend, it's, it's all based, the charge is based on the number of people in a room. So there'll be, if there are four people in your room, you'll pay about 50. If there are three people in your room, you're going to pay about 67. And if there are only two people, you'll pay about a hundred. So it, it goes down. So, it, and if like, if four parents wanted to bunk up to get a cheaper room, that is, you know, up to them. But in the past, when we've done this, we've generally had four students and two parents in most rooms. Uh, and we have had a couple of times pa parents and students bunk together. 
Um, and, and also, is there um, are are we also paying for uh, paying somebody for the tickets for that show? No. So this is this is the thing that I do to try and sweeten the deal. TVHS Drama pays for all the registration and for the show tickets. Now I got to make sure we can still get the show tickets. So, but uh, but if, if, as long as we, they're still available and I can get them, um, I pay for the show tickets. I pay for the registration. Um, it comes out to about two grand for us to go to the festival, mm -hmm. and TVHS Drama covers that two grand. I just can't cover the hotels, so I cover mm -hmm. everything that we can, everything that's required of the festival. But I, I, I even liability wise can't cover the hotels. So and then and then because we this is all new to us. So then if we if we place, then do they go into like a final round? I don't know. Every, everything happens on Friday and Saturday. So the first round of competition is Friday. The second round of competition is Saturday morning, and then mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon is finals. Oh, okay. So and then they and, and then then the. Um, there's an award ceremony at like five o'clock on Saturday. The whole thing's done by 6 p.m. Saturday. Okay. So it starts about noon Friday and goes till about 6 p.m. Saturday. And it's pretty like, and the first round only goes till six on Friday as well. That's why if we weren't going to have parent drivers, we could totally take the bus. It wouldn't even be that bad. It'd just be a long bus ride back and then back up again in the morning. Um, so, but the competition is basically from 12 to six and then from eight to six the next day. Okay. Do you um, do you happen to know yet, or when we will know um, what competition is on which day? So if now, everything's on both days, so there's okay. two rounds. There's two rounds. Okay. So okay. everyone performs in round one, and everyone performs in round two, and then the the ten best from everything from each event perform in the finals of that round. Okay. So okay. the most that anyone performs is three times. The least is two. Everyone does at least two, but may maybe as many as three. Okay. And is this open to like, I know maybe not the public, but like can grandparents come that are out there and stuff? It so is actually yeah. open to the public. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tickets can be purchased in advance for that or they buy them at the door? For You don't family. have to purchase tickets unless you're oh. competing in the event. Oh, okay. It's okay. open to the public. Yeah. So it's just the only people who have to pay registration fees are the students. Okay. Great. So, well, and, so <laughs> yeah. And, and so that we, we've had parents that pop up and, and pop back down because they can't do the whole day or they just come up for Saturday. That's yeah. great. We love that. But we need to have those like nine or 10 committed to be there the whole time because once we get to, once we get to Fullerton, they got to go to the hotel. They got to come back. Like we got to make sure there's constantly enough room in cars. Right. And, and the, the other thing is, and this is a question that I've had parents ask and students ask. So I just like to answer it right off the bat. Students may not drive under any circumstances, not even just themselves. Students must ride with an adult. That, that's part of the way that we get around the liability issues with this. Yeah. Is we do not let any yeah. students drive anybody for any reason. I don't care if they're, and, and even if they are 18, if they are a registered student at the event, they may not drive. And most of the rounds are in classrooms. There's some, like the musical theater ones tend to be in, in theaters, yeah. but if you've never done this before and you're, I don't know if you're like picturing it, like everybody's on stage, they're, they're usually in a classroom setting and they just perform at the front of the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. It is a junior college, so it's very much like a large high school, and they have three different um, stage spaces that they use for the musical theater uh, competition because every school only, like, it's the one that every school enters, and they're only allowed to do one, and then, like, when finals happens, the line to try to watch the musical theater finals is crazy. Like, it, it fills up. People can't get in there. Um but most of it, like Michelle said, most of the rounds of competition take place in a typical classroom sized room. And so, but they're very nice. Like the big, one of the things I mentioned before is when we've gone to the other festival that we've gone to, the D-Task Festival, that's the Drama Teachers Association of Southern California. Um, all the teachers have to work the festival. So when we go that, I don't see the kids do anything. I am stuck in a room tabulating scores all day. That's my favorite thing about Fullerton is I have no responsibility. I just get to watch and support and be a cheerleader. Um, and that's what parents get to do. So like last time we went, I got to see like 10 different performances of my kids. And it was awesome. It is an outstanding event. And um, yeah, I, I mean, those of you who go as, as chaperones, 
you're going to have a good time. It's really fun. Any other questions about the Fullerton? Yeah. I just wanted to add to, yeah, your kid's day and your day will be a, a great blast. Um, they show up, we used to call it the Woodstock, you know, like theater Woodstock, because it's, you know, every school gets its own little campground, the school, the schools decorate their campgrounds, there's uh, spirit competitions that go on, they have bands that perform to um, in the middle of it uh, to entertain the kids. But yeah, so your kid will get told what room they're going to, and they'll perform the only ones that are really hard to watch are improv and musical. Yeah. Improv gets super packed because everybody because, has to see Yeah, them. the improv teams all stay in there and watch yeah. each other is what the problem is. Mm -hmm. And there's there's five people on each team. So if you got 20 improv teams, there's 100 people in the room to watch. Yeah, it's rough. Um, but also, like, you see kids just, like, spontaneously starting drama warm-ups with, like, groups of like 50 kids in the middle of a quad like it's amazing like, like all the ways that our kids are weird all the kids there are weird it's awesome all the weird kids together yes i mean i mean that so affectionately i was a drama kid and i was weirder than all the rest of them so please no please no all right so i am going to assume uh, I'm going. I'm not even assuming. I realize now we have the numbers. We're going to make it work. Um, I'm going to send out an email to all the Fullerton parents again. So please um, check your emails if your kids are going to Fullerton and just respond to me. So because the email is going to say, "Are you going? How many seats?" That way, because a bunch of people said stuff, but I want to make sure I have a, a, a spreadsheet that has all this stuff worked out. This many seats in this car. This many seats in this car. So. Um, either tonight after this or more likely tomorrow. I will write an email out to all the Fullerton parents. If you're going to drive, if you're going to go, just answer the questions, get back to me as soon as you can. That way we can really, really get the ball rolling. Okay. I'm super excited um, about Fullerton. And we're also, and I, it's worth just mentioning that I've gotten two emails that say, we're still planning on being in person. Those emails make me a little nervous, but, you know, I think, I really think that they don't want to go online. They will lose half their schools. They will lose a bunch of revenue. And honestly, if they had to go online one more year, that they, like it could sink the competition. You know what I mean? Like they, they lost a ton of money in 2020 because they had to refund every single school's registration and they'd already spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on the tournament. So, um, I, I imagine they're going to do everything in their power to make sure it stays live. And, and that's what we want. Um, okay. We're good on Fullerton. Everyone feels good about that. Great. Uh, there will be more, like I said, either tonight or tomorrow, we'll have an email out to the parents and then we will set up another meeting uh, and we're going to do it in person. Just so y'all know, if I need y'all to show up for Fullerton, I need you to show up at the meeting. So when we do the next Fullerton meeting, we will have an in-person meeting in the PAC. So um, keep your eyes out for that email. All right. Let's talk about the SpongeBob musical, friends. Um, listen, we are well underway. We're a week and a half into, or two weeks, oh my gosh, into um, rehearsals. Um, we're still learning music. We're starting on choreography. We really haven't started blocking yet. Um, the stage tech team is working hard to, to, to bust out set pieces so that we can get them painted and organized. It's, it's going to be uh, a great show, but I, I can also an anticipate that I'm going to be sending out some emails about SpongeBob because the way the set works and the way all the props and the costumes work is it's supposed to be kind of like DIY, like found things. And so I need some junk. I need some stuff that like people threw into the ocean and, fell to the bottom of the sea that people used to make their houses. Like if you've ever seen the show, like one of the buildings is a car muffler, right? So we, we want to populate our entire uh, set with just objects and things, you mostly sea things like boats and like boating things, life preservers, fishing poles, things like that. But there will be some emails coming out about what, getting some donations of, uh, not even donations, loaning us we will give everything back we'll take good care of it but in order to have all the props and set pieces we need we may need some help from families to um find some random things like does anyone have access to a cash register 
I mean like a cash register, cash register. I've been looking all around for one, can't find one. It's kind of an important prop and something. So if anyone has a cash register, that's one of the things that will be in our email. It has to look like, a, I, I knew the Coles were going to have an answer to this one. I knew they were. I just had a feeling. Um, so it just has to look like a cash register. We'll only see the back of it. But it's a very famous thing with the show. Squidward stands in this little boat with a, at a cash register. And, like, I'm not so certain about the boat yet. I don't know how to build a boat. Like, bending wood and stuff doesn't sound like lots of fun to me. But I want to at least have the cash register if I can. So, oh, it's broke. Even better. <laughs> Give me a broke cash register. That's exactly what I want. All right. Excellent. So the big thing about SpongeBob is there are six performances um, and there are, and I think there's one thing I wanted to check back with you. Yeah, I thought, I think Michelle, that we were gonna do three nights of tech dinner. So I think that we, we might need to add the 13th of April. Okay. But I I also have some some not so good news about SpongeBob. It's not, it's not terrible, but we were supposed to have a day of previews on Wednesday, the, the 13th of April. Yeah, that's CASP testing that week. We have full-on two-hour block schedules of testing in every class that week and the week before it. So, or the week after it, I guess. I don't, yeah, the week after it. I'm not certain we're going to be able to have a preview performance of any kind. We were actually looking at inviting the middle schools over to watch, like, the first act of the show. Um, I'm not sure we can do that either because we'd have to pull kids out of testing. And that's just not really going to happen, I don't think. I'm going to check with my my bosses at the school, but I think the preview day is probably a wash because of CASP testing. But if you go to the Sign Up Genius, um, we're, at, we're asking for parents to, to chip in on a couple of things. One, as always, we need concessions and ticket sales people for um, the nights of the performances. We also love to get donations of concession items that we can sell, candy bars, chips, Actually, we have lots of chips right now. We're going to cool it on the chips for a minute. But um, candy bars and candy especially and water bottles. Uh, and we also do tech dinner because there are three dress rehearsals that the kids are called at three and they're not done till nine. And so that definitely eclipses dinner time in any conventional fashion. So we like to, st we like to get ourselves ready for the run through, stop, eat dinner, and then run the show. So um, we generally have dinner at five. It says five to six. I'm going to try and get these ones done by 530 because the show is actually two and a half hours long. And I want to make sure we have enough time to finish it before the end of the night. <clears throat> but there is the space for people to sign up for entrees and side dishes and, and uh, desserts for our tech dinner nights. And then there's also all the sign up shots, uh, spots for donations um, and for volunteering for those nights. We have six performances starting on. April 14th and going all the way till Saturday, the 23rd of April. Um, so please, you can use the link we put there in a couple times in the chat. It's in there. Um, and we, lo we love to have you all help out, donate, volunteer. Um, you all, if you don't know, I guess I say you all know, but I, you know, it's been a while. I have a lot of new people. We don't get a whole lot of money in support of what we do. Actually, they've actually, I, I must mention that they have increased it a, a quite a lot. It's like three times more now than it was four years ago when I started. It's still not very much, y'all. It's still not very much. Almost everything that we spend on costumes, scenery, props, um, and anything else that we spend money on, which is considerable other things, comes from concession sales and donations. And so if you can donate concessions, that really helps concessions give us a considerable fundraiser fundraising power um that's why we do the snap raise every year so um we, we love getting support from parents through donations of snacks and drinks that we can sell um at our events okay are there any questions about the spongebob musical um i had a question um so with fundraisers um uh, of course you know donating snacks and selling the snacks and all that but um can you guys do like a 50-50 raffle at intermission or anything like that? Yeah, raffles are a little tricky because um, I actually did a raffle my first fundraiser and I got in trouble because raffles are considered mm. legally a game of chance. So there is a way to do a raffle, but it's like in order to sell raffle tickets, you have to give everyone the opportunity to win for free. 
So in order to sell them, you have to give everyone one and then sell any above one. And if we give everyone one, some people will not buy a second one. <laughs> so we, okay. we haven't done raffles in a while because of that exact thing. Um, what we have done, we've done silent auctions and stuff. We do have one more fundraiser coming up a little bit later in the year. Although actually I got to look at the dates because um, I think we might've just, no, it was before that. It was uh, the first week of, it, of May, I think. I think I was going to say, I think we might've just Shanghai the dates for that for Mary Gerard, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but I think we're okay. So we're going to do another cabaret show, probably like two weeks after SpongeBob closes, just going to have an informal like Thursday night come and, and we'll, you know, charge $5 for tickets and we'll just have the kids entertain as a fundraiser. And um, then we could do, we might talk about doing some kind of a um, uh, raffles. We usually have people donate raffle packages or something like that. So there are, 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 are things that we do for fundraising. Um, but again, concessions is our number one thing. That's our, the way we do it all year long. Um, okay. Further questions about the SpongeBob musical? No, we're good. All right, great. Um, last but not least, I do want to mention that, um, I, I said at the beginning, we had to cancel some dates of Mar the insanity of Mary Gerard. I've talked to our school admin. I've contacted the people who hold the rights for the show. I've talked to our senior directors, um, and they've checked mostly with the cast. I think we're all set. The dates are now for our makeup performances are May 20th and May 21st. Now we canceled three and we're only bringing two back, but I want to make sure they have that extra night to rehearse in case they need it. So we're just going to do a Friday and a Saturday. Um, I know a lot of people didn't get to see the show. So uh, I've sent out numerous emails. And if you're holding tickets, you've heard from me. I know you have. Um, but just so in case you haven't or whatever, anyone who purchased tickets for those three canceled shows, those tickets are still good. I have a list. I know who you are. You don't have to do a single thing besides show up on either the 20th and the 21st. I don't even care which night you come. We got the list. We'll make sure you get in. I promise. That said, and I've, 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 this is the third, and then we the last time I'm going to mention it because I just want to, I, I want to stop saying the word refund, and it's not my favorite word. But if anyone does, if they can't make the show and they need to get a refund for the tickets they purchased for Mary Gerard, it's a little more complicated than it really needs to be. I promise you that because everything financial that comes from the school tends to be that. Um, but. I can get you a refund. It will just take a couple of weeks to make that happen. So if you can't come, you want your 10 or 15 bucks back for every ticket you purchased, I fully support that. I will make it happen. Just I appreciate your patience. Please send me an email if that's the case, and we will start the ball rolling on getting you your money back. Okay. I think the last, is there any question about the insanity of Mary Gerard? For those of you who were at opening night, you know, it is powerful. It is a really fun, well, fun. It's kind of intense. It's, it's, I don't know if fun is the best word to describe it, but it's, it's a really well produced. The kids did a great job directing it. Elena Murphy and Elise were really on top of it. They worked together as a team. The cast is super strong. Um, we're, we're holding on to all the costumes. We got those blood splattered walls set up on the side and we're keeping them keeping them so that is coming back and we we hope that even if you came and saw it well it's gonna be a few months later you should come see it again you should you should come see it again all right i believe the last order of business is i do have to um i had to submit to michelle a request for a reimbursement um i'm just buying props and and uh things for mary gerard and now for spongebob um, and there's a little history behind this, just so you know, if anyone hasn't heard my, my epic tales of props purchasing, I uh, got called into the, the purchaser's office at the district, uh, when I bought props for Legally Blonde, and there were three items that I purchased at Walmart that they made me actually give them cash out of my pocket because they would not pay for these items. One of them was perfume bottles that I bought for $7 a piece because there were perfume bottles in the show but they said that's a chemical can't we can't buy that and you can't have that so i had to give them the 14 dollars for the, the perfume bottles 
one of them was a box of Starbucks, the Starburst candies that we were having our friend Brooke use as fake gum. But there is a, a, a clause that says you cannot purchase candy as treats. So I had to buy the Starburst that Brooke Horn used as her gum. And finally, my favorite, my favorite one is there is a scene in the courtroom where they talk about the clothes that the gardener was wearing. He was wearing a thong. They have to show the thong. So I had to buy, I did not want anyone to use a used thong under any circumstances. So I insisted on purchasing a new one, which they said, you cannot buy undergarments for the children. And I said, here, I showed it to them. I'm like, no one is going to wear this. It was $3. I had to pay $3. Now, the best news is the parent boosters reimbursed me for those props. And that is when we decided that there's any props of any even remotely questionability, like Starburst, that I'm just buying them and asking for reimbursement. So I bought... Um, 24 sponges. You can guess why. You can guess why I bought um, a, like a baby doll for Mary Gerard. Some things like that. So there is, I think, do we, I think the total was like $233, Michelle. Does is, is that sound about right? Yeah, it's pretty close. I will. Yeah. One of the things I did just like, purchase this week was a little MIDI keyboard that we're using for SpongeBob for our, our sound effects fish because there's a Foley artist that is required for the show. And so I had to purchase a little board to make sound effects. So I'm asking, and we'll take a vote here in our parent booster meeting. Um, uh, and actually I can't ask. Michelle, would you ask for permission to reimburse me for my expenses? All in favor of reimbursing Mr. Bailey, or maybe it would be easier for anybody to unmute and just say nay if you- yeah, Anyone opposed? Okay, I don't. I'm not want to, opposed. I was raising my hand for a yes. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to own a MIDI keyboard, so I appreciate you guys buying that one off of me. All right, thanks. Okay, I think that's it. Um, let me check my. The other things that we have are further down the list. We have our senior uh, showcase for VAPA. That's on May 26th. We'll talk about that at our next meeting. We have our banquet on Wednesday, June 1st. That's going to be a great night. We'll talk about that in subsequent meetings as well. Um, but that is all that I have for you. If anyone has, does anyone have any questions for the general purpose of people hearing your questions before I let everyone get out of here? All right, then let me just say thank you so much for supporting TVHS Drama. Um, there is nothing that we can do at TVHS Drama without the support and, and um, care of the parents of the students. You allow them to do it. You encourage their involvement. You volunteer and, and donate. And I, 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 I've said it since my first day, having a strong and interested parent booster group is of the utmost importance to any arts organization at school. I appreciate you all for being here, giving your time tonight, giving your time at Fullerton, giving your time to sell tickets. Thank you so much. You are the backbone of TVHS Drama and you make it all work. If you have any questions for me, I will stick around for a few minutes. If not, thank you for being here. Look out for an email about Fullerton Parent Meeting and I'll see you all at the Improv Show on Friday. Okay, this is so random, but for like the Fullerton, like when we do the scenes, um, how do how does like like how does that work? Like, do we do them again the next day or mm -hmm. for different judges? <gasps> oh, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, you do it. To, that, that that ensures that there is like some because if you messed up in the first one, you can redeem you yourself in the second, the second one. one. So you get two different sets of usually three, sometimes only two, two to four judges is usually uh -huh. what you see. Okay, gotcha. Makes sense. Yes. All right. Wait, so we do the same thing twice? Yeah, for different for sets of judges. Oh, okay. So it's not pre probing it's just re -proving. No, 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 no. Improv is different. You play, oh. a, dif you play a different game. I'm sorry. Because oh, okay. Peyton was asking about scenes. Yeah. You do an entirely different game the next day. So it won't oh. even be... 
It's not. It's going to be a different game, different call oh. fours, totally different for improv. Right. Okay. Everybody else does the exact same thing twice. Mm -hmm. Okay, got gotcha. you. <laughs> Wait, you yeah, she's in a scene too, or a monologue. What are you doing, Emma? What's your second thing? I'm doing a comedic scene with Dia. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> It's worth it then. I'm just like, if I'm there as a chaperone, obviously I'll be there both days. But if my husband wants to come, he it, it's not like he's going to be seeing the same thing, right? It'll still be somewhat different for improv, but not the scene. The improv will be totally different. The, the okay. scene, the, uh, Emma will be performing the same scene on Friday afternoon that she performs on Saturday morning. And it's funny. You'll want to see it twice. Wait, okay. wait, Bo Bait. It's yes. called Wait, Wait, Bo Bait. But hey, it's it's actually really funny, so I think it's worth seeing twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go go twice. It's amazing. I'll be there. I won't have a choice apparently. <laughs> but I just want to make it worse for my husband. <laughs> so right. Okay. Well, and that's the, that's the great thing about the Saturday morning round is that if you miss anything, you can. You, is people like parents who have to work and can't come, they can come on Saturday. Okay, got it. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Bye, Mr. Bailey. Okay. Thanks Bye. a lot. Um, Mr. Bailey, um, so I was late to the meeting and I couldn't hear all the Fullerton talk. Um, <laughs> we didn't talk about Fullerton. What? I totally know you're lying. Um, I caught you. I caught you in a lie. Anyways. <laughs> uh, and my mom couldn't make it. So uh, um, you'll be sending out an email about chaperones, question mark? I have sent out many emails already about chaperones. If your mom wants to chaperone, she needs to sign up on Sign Up Genius. But I will also be sending out an email probably tomorrow um, asking parents specifically if they're chaperoning, how many seats they have in their car, and, all, and who's all going. Um, and we'll also be setting up a meeting date for all of the parents and attendees to come and talk about Fullerton. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to know what to tell her once you get back. Okay. Thank you. See ya. See ya.